Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Ayin Vav, Daf uh, 76 of Masechta Yoma. Uh, Daf Ayin Vav, we continue talking about the Man a little bit, which is pretty interesting. And then we move on to Rechitza and Sicha, washing and anointing on Yom Kippur. So that is what we will be discussing. We're going to start on Daf Ayin Vav, Mur Aleph, um, Two, four, five lines into the page. Shalut Tamid of Reb Shimon Ben Yochai. So Reb Shimon Ben Yochai's students asked him, "Mipnei malo yarad loem liyisrael mam pam achas ba'ashana." You hear the shaila? It's talk a good kasha. Reb Shimon Ben Yochai's students asked him, "Why doesn't the man come down just once a year? How come we need the man to come down every single day? Arguably, it could be more convenient." If it just came down once a year, we know that we have all of our food for a year. We don't have to worry about where our food's going to come tomorrow. We have enough food and we collect it once a year, like one big collection. And we have our food for the year. Wouldn't that arguably be more convenient than to have to go out every single day and collect man? And there's no guarantee that it's going to come the next day. It's a little stressful. So, Meloim Em Shalachim Moshel Madavadome. So, Shem Ben Yochai says, Well, I'll give you a parable. To a king who has a son. And the king gave his son all of his support for one year and give it to him for the whole year at a time. Whether it's food, money, whatever it is. Once a year he would give his son everything that he needs. But what ended up happening as a result was that the son would only visit his father, the king, once a year when he needed some more money. So he changed the strategy so that he would give his son what he needs every single day. And then, of course, as a result, what happened? The son was visiting his father every single day so that he can get what he needs. Also the same thing with the Yidin. If you have a fellow who was schlepping around in the mid in the midbar with the yidden for forty years, and he's got four or five kids, he was nervous. What happens if it doesn't? If there's no man tomorrow, and I'm responsible for all of these children, and they're all going to die because there's no food to eat. And therefore, everybody would look towards God. For their sustenance. And therefore, if God would give them food once a year, so they, you know, there would be a lot more security. They wouldn't need God as much. They have their food. But when, you know, every day, there's no guarantee that there's going to be food the next day. Well, then you have to look up to God and pray and rely upon God for your food every single day. Wow. Another opinion is that, uh, if 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 you only get your man once a year, it's going to be cold. It was hot on the day that you collected it, but cold every other day. So, but if God provides man every day, so it's hot man. Practically, it would be very difficult to schlep a year's worth of food. So God just... You know, I had the man come down every day. You had exactly what you need. Very lean. Right? That, I think that that would fit in in the just-in-time sort of uh, principle of lean. Of like lean product manufacturing. That you have just what you need. You know, on big yearly storehouses that you're schlepping around. Where am I? Where <laughs> So, Reb Tarfin, Reb Yishmael, and other elders were learning the sugya of Mon. Reb Lazar Amudai Yoshe Benein. Reb Lazar Amudai was sitting with them. Nene Reb Lazar Amudai ve'Omar. And Reb Lazar Amudai said the following statement: Man shiyard lion li Yisrael ayah kavosh yishem amo. Says Reb Lazar Amudai that the Mon was sixty amos tall. I assume what that means is that it kilo piled up. It was almost like imagine. I said feet, but um, Amma. 
Imagine you have like 60 amas of snow, whatever. So it would be like 60 amas tall of the uh, mud. It's a lot of mud. It's a lot of mud. It's probably like 80 feet of mud or something. A lot of mud. A lot of mud. To which Reptaifin says, Modoy, where'd you get, where'd you come up with this? Omerlo, so Belazar Modoy says to Reptaifin, Rebbe Mikra Anidosh. He says, look, I'm, I'm really just expounding a pasuk. What pasuk? Chomish Esri Amar Milmaila Gavra Amayim, Mahichasu Eharim. So it says by the flood waters by Noah that the water of the flood was 15 amas above the top of the mountains. How could it be that you know, if you have a uniform amount of water, how could it be that it was 15 amas tall in the valleys, 15 amas tall on top of the mountains, Kilu? How could it be that uh, these 15 amas were going to cover equally the whole world, right? Meaning you have, right? How would the boat be able to travel? I mean, you need like a uniform depth of the water but how does that take account into account like the valleys and the mountains? How's it going to cover everything? No, rather what it means is that when it says in the Pasuk in Noach that the, that, the, that the waters from the depths of the earth opened up, So what it means is that the water gushed out from the depths of the earth and it kept on Becoming more and more and more until it covered even the mountains. And then once it covered even the mountains, it then continued for another 15 amas until it was even 15 amas above the mountains. And that is how the ark was able to travel on the water because the water was uniformly, you know, sort of the highest common denominator, or maybe that's the lowest common denominator. No, I imagine it's the highest common denominator. Is the top of the mountains, so the water just kept on piling up, piling up, piling up until it covered the mountains, plus another fifteen amas, and the table was able to float on that. Now continues Rabalazar Mudai and he says, Now, what is considered more right? Well, what's like a better trait, I guess? Good things or bad things? Right, Kilu, when the Abishtur brings something good or he brings something bad, which is which is more significant? Have you ever made the tova? You made us puranus. Something good is more significant than something bad. When it says by the flood, which was obviously a negative context, a negative situation, it says that the windows of the heavens opened up. And by something good, i.e. the man, it says, that God uh, commanded the heavens above, and He opened up the doors of the heavens, and He rained down upon the Yidin, man to eat, and He gave the Yidin grain from heaven. Now how many windows are there in a door? I don't know, I guess you can divide a door in four. Arba, right? So you can have four. Arba, Arba. Harekan Shmona, which is eight, because it says, um, what did it say? Vaitav Shokim of Adal Se Shemaim Pasach. That he opened up the doors, plural, of the heavens. So if we want to say that each door is made up of like four compartments, i.e. like four windows, and we want to say that by the flood, it says, Varubo Sashemaim Niftahu, that God opened up the windows, plural, of the heavens, and we know that it rained 15, until the water went 15 amas above the top of the mountain, so basically 15 amas for two windows, but we're saying that by the month there were two doors, and each door is four windows, so eight windows, so if two windows were good for 15 amas, well then eight windows are good for 60 amas. 
Okay, so you see that the man was piled up 60 amas tall because if the rain from the um, floods were 15 amas tall, you know, above the top of the mountains from two windows, well then the eight windows from the doors of the heavens for the man um, would be 15 times 4, which is 60. All right, sounds very nice. Tanya Isi ben Yudo Omis is Isi ben Yudo Manchi Ardlem, the Israel of Mizgab of Ola Chiro, and also Komachim Izrochumayrev. Says Isi ben Yudo that the man that came down for the Yidden, all of the kings of East and West would be able to see it. It was piled up so high that you can see it from far. Shinemar, as the puzzle says, Tarak Lafana, Shochan Eget Sarai Vigomer. Says that you will organize the table before my oppressors. And I guess that that is a, a reference to. Um, um, displaying the man piled high to all of the kings to show, don't mess, we got something special going on over here. Kosi Revaya, my uh, cup is overfilled, uh, um, overflowing. Amr Abai says, Abai Shmamina, we learned from Kosi Revaya that Kasa the David, the Alma the Asi, that the glass, that the cup, the goblet of David Melech in the future, the world to come, Mosin Vesim Vichad, Luga Machzik. It will hold 221 logs, I guess, of wine. Sounds nice. Shinema, as the puzzle says, Kosi Revaya. Revaya Bigmatra Achiave. As the puzzle says that my Kos is Revaya. Now, Revaya in Gematria is 221. So we see that in the future, David Melech's cup is going to hold 221 logs, I guess, of wine. Very nice. Halodamya, Nafrekti Gemara. Hasan by Ben Yomin, Hacha Chada Shaita, Hasan Mukhuli Alma, Hacha Lisal Chude Vinafish Lutfei. In fact, the Gemara, one second, how can we, how can Belazah Amodai compare the Mun with the floods of the Mabul? The Mun was actually more significant because the floods of the Mabul, after all, by Ben Yomin, it took 40 days in order to accumulate all this water. Whereas Hacha Chada Shaita, over here, I managed to do it in just one hour. Over there, it was spread out among the whole world. Over here, it's just concentrated on the Yidden alone. So I believe the point is that uh, it should have been more significant for the Yidden. And therefore, way more than 60 Amas. Amudai learned, uh, it said, Pasach by the Man, it says Pasach by the, by the, um, Mabul, so it must be that they're both. You compare the two, don't get carried away, just 60 amas tall. Alright. Sounds good to me. Also, Bachila, so moving on in the Mishnah, right? So we said, then Yom Kippur, you're not allowed to eat, not allowed to drink, bathe, anoint, things like that. Hani Chamisha, Inuin Kinegin me. How come we have five of these things that we do on Yom Kippur? How come there are five Inuin? So I'm of Chizda Kineged Hey Inuyin Shabbat Torah. Says of Chizda because well, it says in the context of Yom Kippur in the Torah five times, the equivalent of Inisim Es Nafsho Seichem. Mamish says that five times. Uve Asor Ve'Achba Sor Shabbos Shabbosim V'Shabbos Shabbosim V'Yisolachem. Keilu the Gemara just quotes the five sources, the five locations where Yom Kippur is discussed, and you can look it up in each one of those locations. It says Ve'Inisim, and therefore, so we learn that there are five Inuyim. In fact, the Gemara, but one second, we just listed in the, we just listed five Inuim, yet in our Mishnah it lists six. To which the Gemara answers, well, technically drinking is included in eating. So it's really just like eating, you know. So Achila and Shtiya is one thing, and then Sicha Rechitza, Nilitza Sanda Vatash Mishamita is a total of five. Dom Rishlakish, as Rishlakish says, Minayin Shtiya Shi Bechlal Achila, how do we know? That drinking is included in eating. Then when we say eating, it means eating and drinking. Shinema is the Pazuk says, Vachatul of Neshem Lekecha, Maiser, the Gancha Tiroshka, Vitsurecha, Tiroshka, Meru, Vikarile, Vachalta. Let's read that again. This is a Pazuk, I believe, in the context of Maiser Shani, that you bring it to Yushalayim and you eat it in Yushalayim. Vachatul of Neshem Lekecha, that you'll eat it before Hashem, your God, Maiser, the Gancha Tiroshka, Vitsurecha, the Maiser of your grain, your wine, your oil, tirosh chamru v'karile v'achalta. So, tirosh is wine, and yet we're saying v'achalta, you'll eat it 
before God in Jerusalem. So we see that we refer to drinking as eating. Mimai. How do I know that when we say wine, we're talking about drinking wine? Uh, yes. Maybe he's not drinking the wine. Maybe he's eating the wine. How do you eat the wine? By way of a negron. Going way back to Masech de Brachis. That a negron is some kind of a borscht. And achsigron is some kind of other cooked vegetables. So, 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 maybe when the Pasuk says that you will eat wine, it literally means that you're going to eat wine because you're going to, you put some wine, you cook with it basically. You put some wine into an anigron, into some kind of borscht, and you cook with it, and then at that point it's not considered drinking wine, it's considered eating wine. So maybe when it says that you're going to eat wine before God, it maybe it literally means to eat wine in some kind of cooked food. It's not considered drinking, but drinking would be separate than um, drinking would be se- separate than eating. So Rav Acha Yaakov suggests from the following positive, again, by my Shane, that you'll spend your, right, if you, if you transfer the, 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 the Kedusha of your Maestro Shane onto money and you bring that money to Jerusalem and then you use that money to buy whatever you want, it says, uh, cows, sheep, as well as wine and intoxicants. So So we see that wine and other intoxicants, you drink them. And still we're saying that you will um, eat it. Wait, does it actually say Vachata? One second, I'm going to read that positive. It says you're going to eat it, Darton. So we see once again that wine and intoxicants are referred to as ve'achalta. So we see that eating is is, is that, that, that well that eating covers drinking as well. But again, how do you know that that's a proof? Maybe when it talks about yain v'sheicha, you're eating it in some kind of anigron. You're eating it in some kind of a cooked uh, borscht or something. And um, but really, you're eating it. You're not drinking it. And for the gemara sheicha k'siv, midi the meshaker. Well, it says in the Pasuk, Sheikhar, something that makes you drunk, intoxicated. And wine will only make you intoxicated when you drink it. It won't make you intoxicated if you cook with it. And therefore, because it says Sheikhar, in the context of the wine, that you have to get intoxicated by it, means that you're drinking it. And yes, the Pasuk calls it Ve'achato, so we see that drinking is included in eating. Vidoma Dvele Ke'ilis, one second. Maybe, you know what the intoxicant is? The intoxicant is not the wine. The wine you're cooking with and eating with. And the intoxicant is actually these, these, um, fig, I don't know, wheels from ke'ilis. If a fellow eats this dvela ke'ilis, or drinks, um, uh, honey or milk, and he goes into the basement, she gets malchus. So maybe when it says sheikhar, intoxicant, it's not talking about drinking wine. Maybe it's talking about eating this dvela ke'ilis. So again, when the Pasuk says, Bechata, it's talking about eating, but dr- drinking would be an Ander Azach, it would be something else. Rather answers the Gemara, well, it says, Sheikhar by my Sosheni, it says, Sheikhar by Nazir, just like by Nazir, it's talking about wine. And if we're calling it Sheikhar, we're talking about intoxicating wine, i.e. drinking wine. So here also by um, my Sosheni, we're talking about uh, wine drinking wine and we're calling the khalta so we see uh, that wine include that, that that eating includes drinking as well now fact the gemara is tirosh really wine we just assumed right that when it says tirosh what did it say uh, tirosh who can even remember what's tirosh tirosh is wine the gemara says wait a second why who says is Tirosh really wine v'atanya, but we learned a brisa. No, do we not tirosh? Also, b'chomina misiko muter biyai. Fact of Gemara that we have a brisa that says that if a fellow says I'm not going to have any tirosh, guess what? He's allowed to drink wine. You can't have, as Rashi says, apples, grapes. That's referred to tirosh. 
Wine, wine's allowed. So there you have it. We have a Brysa clearly saying that if a fellow says, I am not going to have any tirosh, well, he's allowed to drink wine. Well, then clearly tirosh is something other than wine. Falav chamru? To which the Gemara says, one second. Seriously, you think that tirosh is not wine? Vyaksev, what about the Pasuk says, v'tirosh yinova b'sulis? That, that, that tirosh will make the uh, b'sulis, the, the virgin speak. What does that mean? So Rashi says, meaning just like a virgin, uh, a virgin keeps herself protected from other men from staying away from them. So also a person who generally keeps himself, you know, closed and doesn't share too many and di- diver- divulge too much information, the wine will open up this person and uh, and get them to speak. So what do we see? So we see that Tirosh is um, wine. Lemaise. Dover abomina Tirosh. You know, Vibisulis. So the Pazit says no. So the Gemara says no. Tirosh is not wine. Tirosh is grapes. And what it means is Tirosh, you know, it means that that which comes from grapes, i.e. ultimately wine, but literally speaking, Tirosh is the grapes, that which comes from the grapes will make a person speak and open up. But, uh, but, 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 but Tirosh itself does not literally mean wine. But what about the Pasuk of Mishle that says that the Tirosh of your wine pits will be filled up. Doesn't that mean what's in wine pits? Wine, no? No, that which comes from the grapes will fill up your wine pits. We have a Pasuk that says that uh, uh, inappropriate relationships as well as wine and Tirosh will take your take a fellow's heart. So grapes aren't going to take a fellow's heart. It's wine. So Tirosh must be wine. Rather, everyone agrees that Tirosh is wine. Okay. So then how do you explain the Bryce in Adarim that says if a fellow says, I'm not going to have any Tirosh, then he's nonetheless allowed to have wine. But didn't we say that Tirosh is wine? So if he says, I'm not having Tirosh, then he shouldn't be allowed to have wine. So Alecha Echeloshim Bneudim. So the Gemara says that when it comes to Nidarim, you know, promises. So we go based on how people normally talk. And people don't usually refer to wine as Tirosh. If a person wants to say, I'm not going to have any wine, so he would say, I'm not going to have any yain. He wouldn't say, I'm not going to have any Tirosh. And therefore, if he says, I'm not going to have any Tirosh, he's not talking about wine. Now, in fact, the Gemara, we had the Pasuk that says, Znus v'yayin v'tirosh yikachlev. That inappropriate relationships as well as wine and Tirosh will take your heart. And we're saying that Tirosh means wine. So why do we have wine? Why do we have Tirosh? What's the difference between yayin and Tirosh? Yain she maybe yilala la olam tirosh she kola mezgare bo naise rosh. Uwa. Not exactly, uh, um, uh, connecting to the positive virtues of wine. Saying that yain brings yilala to the world, like wailing. And tirosh is because anybody who gets too involved with it becomes destitute. Rosh. We've kind of run, we've kind of asked the kasha. Because if tirosh, we carry on tirosh. The word is written in the puzzle, tirosh. Like to become, um, uh, destitute. The Karina Tirosh, but we read it Tirosh. Zachanai se Rosh, lo Zachanai se Rosh. Well, if you, if you, if you, uh, know how to handle your wine properly, well, then you could become a Rosh. You could become a head. But if you, uh, don't know how to handle your wine properly, you could become a Rosh. You become destitute. Ravarami Rav asked the Kashi Yishamach Vikarinon, Ksiv Yishamach Vikarinon Yisamach, that the Pasuk is written Yishamach. But we read it, Yisamach, Zacham Asamcho, Zacham Ashamimo. That if a fellow merits, so then it will make him Yisamach, it will make him happy. But if he doesn't merit, it will make him, like, destroyed. Shimamon. Vainu Dhamma Rav, and this is what Rav says, Chama Varech Nipikhin, that wine and fragrances can make a person, can open a person up, make him very smart and wise. So that means that if a fellow um, is Zoche, so then, then the wine can make him happy, it can make him smart. Rechitza v'sicha minolan dekre inoy. Frek de Gemara, how do I know that Rechitza and Sicha are called inoy? How do I know that bathing, putting on oil, is called, um, inoy, is called, um, 
What's that called? What's the word? Inoy is um, affliction. The Pasuk says, Lechem chamudis lo achalta, that Daniel says, I didn't eat any, you know, gishmaka um, bread, uvasuviyayin lo boil pi, and I didn't have any meat or any wine, visoch lo sochti, and I didn't anoint any oils. Parenthetically, my lechem chamudis lo achalti, what does it mean that he didn't eat any lechem chamudis? Amr of Yehuda bread of Shmo Bashilas afilunayim of the chite dachyos lo achal. It means that he didn't eat any you know, like clean white bread. That's what I mean. He didn't have any lechem chamudis. He didn't have any proper clean white bread. Now, so what do we see in that pasuk? We saw v'soch lo sochti. He says that he didn't put on any oils. How do we know that 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 him refraining from putting on oils was considered an inoy, a um, affliction? The pasuk says vayomer elai that Gavriel says to Daniel. Altira Daniel, don't worry, Daniel. That from day one, because Daniel did this for 21 days, he afflicted himself. So it says from day one that you decided that you were going to afflict yourself. Nishmud Varecha, your words were heard. Vani Basu Varecha, and I came from your words. So we see that the puzzle says Vesochlo Sochti that Daniel refrained from putting on oil. And it says, Le'es Anos, that it was considered an affliction. Now the Gemara says, okay, great. So we see that anointing oils is considered an affliction. How do you know that bathing is considered an affliction? That the Pasuk says that it came. Is this also in Daniel? No, in Tillin. That, um, that, it, that, that, that it came like water inside of me and like oil on my bones. So we see that we're comparing water to oil. That just like order oil you anoint on your uh, on your skin. So also we're talking about water, not drinking water, but bathing in it and applying it to your, you know, externally in a bath or a shower. Ve'ema kishtia, or even a faucet, I guess, washing your hands. Ve'ema kishtia, why don't I say that um, it's talking about drinking? So do me the shaman, my shaman may af my mavoy. So so we say that we are comparing the water to the oil. That just like oil is external, the water is external. We're not talking about drinking it. Ve'atana ipcha konosivla. But frak the gemara. One second, we have a brisa which Taka teaches the opposite that we compare the oil to the water, not the water to the oil. This not as we learn in the Mishnah. Minai in the sicha she kishtiya biyom kippur. How do we know that anointing is just like drinking on yom kippur? So we say, well, I can't prove it, but I can bring you sort of a, a, a you know, a, a, something that alludes to it. Shinemar, the Pesach says, that it came like water inside of him and like oil in his bones. I.e., so we're saying, how do we know that, that anointing oil is like drinking? So we say, well, the Pesach compares oil to water. So, that's the Gemara's Kasha. Meaning, how come we're saying that we know that Rechitza is also because we compare it to, we say that the Pasuk compares it to oil, and just like oil is external, so therefore we're talking about um, um, water externally, but we have a Brisa that says that how do we know that oil, that applying oil is taka like eating and drinking, because of this very same Pasuk that we say we're comparing oil to water and drinking. So which one is it? Elam Ravashi Rechitza Migufe de Krosh Mielei Dechziv Asoch Lo Sochti Rather, says Rav Ashi, it does not come from this pasuk. Rather, from the fact that the pasuk doesn't just say lo sochti, it says vasoch lo sochti. It's including, it's an extra word to include even rechitza as well. Rav Ashi says that's how we learn out that also rechitza is not allowed. However, that was the Ayin Vav of Masech Yom. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the first part of the Daf continued discussing Mun. We had some interesting um, uh, discussions there. We had Rib Shimon who explained that the man came daily so that we would, um, you know, keep our uh, faith in God so that, you know, every day we had to rely upon God to make sure that um, we had what we needed and it would increase our uh, reliance upon God. Uh, there were two other answers as well. So one was that so that the man should be hot every single day. Additionally, so that we shouldn't have to schlep it around, you know, a year's worth of man to schlep around with us. No, we would get exactly what we need every single day. There was then an interesting um, assertion of Rabbi Lazar Amodai, who says that the man was piled up 60 amos every single day. Um, 
we then continued our Mishnah and we had a discussion about Achila and Shtia, that we said that Shtia is included in Achila. Um, and then we moved on to talking about anointing oils as well as bathing, and we said that those are also not allowed to be done in Yom Kippur. Chebe, that was Daf Ein Vav. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your day. Cheers.